Support comes from Hampton Roads Community Foundation, carrying out your charitable wishes forever. Whether it's helping shelter animals, feeding the homeless, enhancing the arts, or supporting students. Learn more at leaveabequest.org. Hello, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. We're five days away from the midterm elections. Political ads bombard our screens. High-profile political leaders are traveling across the country trying to encourage you to vote for their candidates, and the rhetoric is at a fever pitch. The question is, have you made your choice? Are you going to the polls? And if not, why not? Up next on Another View, the Another View Roundtable with a last-minute push to convince you to do your civic duty. We need you to vote. (laughs) Stay tuned. Another View will be right back after this national, regional, and local news from NPR and WHRO News. Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Misinformation is running rampant. The violence is real. The consequences are high. Welcome to the midterm elections. (laughs) Are you among the millions who have already cast your vote, or are you waiting until November 8th? Or are you not going to vote at all? Our Another View Roundtable pundits, they've got some thoughts about that. So let's meet them. Don Hester is the treasurer for the city of Norfolk. Hey, Don. Hey, hello, everyone. <laughs> How you doing? Carol Pretlow is a political <laughs> science professor at Norfolk State University. How are you, Carol? Oh, wonderful. Good, and we're glad to have you back. We missed you last month. Thank and Gaylene Knoyton is a political activist and president of the Hampton NAACP. How you doing, Gaylene? I'm doing great. Happy election season. <laughs> Happy election season. <laughs> <laughs> so let's... Ladies, let's get into Six this. Um, Paul Pelosi, husband of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, was brutally attacked in their San Francisco home last week. The attacker screamed, where's Nancy? And said he wanted to talk to her and that if she didn't respond appropriately, he would, quote, break her kneecaps. Um, are you surprised that the violence is so rampant now, Dawn? Um, no, I am not surprised clearly very concerned about it though um and I, I for me it's you know we talk about crime in our communities and people are making crime an issue but there's crime in a lot of different ways and that's a crime that was mm-hmm. committed mm-hmm. yet um what is being done to tamp that down because that's coming from an online network of people who are hearing things that are not true, and then making decisions to go and hurt someone. And I mean, hurting someone and over their political her views. views and right, their, their political positions. Views. Yeah. And then, you know, go to her office or make an appointment if you want to talk to her about those. But I was appalled at that, just as I am with all crime. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no reason for anybody to harm anybody for anything. Exactly. Kayleen, what was your response when you heard about it? I wasn't surprised either. I guess what bothers me the most is that this was in a master plan before Trump was even elected. Okay. What do you mean? Well, I believe that um, he was, well, I mean, was he elected or was it, was it hang a shad? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> let me just say this. Um, when he became president, it wasn't that he just popped up and became president. It was planned. Don't you remember when he was running for office and he said, I can go in the middle of New York and kill somebody and still Mm -hmm. be president? Mm -hmm. This was all being planned on how that election was going to happen. Right. And so um, the hate has always been there. He just um, peeled back the onion Mm -hmm. and gave everyone a pass that's been waiting to have a pass. And this Mm -hmm. hatred um, is so bad um, that... Is spilling over to the what we call sensible people who have issues that they got concern, real issues they have concern about, Mm -hmm. but they feel they have no choice but to vote for radical 
Republicans. And it bothers me because now you have people that's going after like Nancy Pelosi or whatever because they so-called support liberals, which really is black and brown people and poor people. Okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about it. And white um, people in there too. Well, mm-hmm. I was well, you know, that's what I said. I said, I said poor people, right? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. right. Exactly, all of them. That too, liberals mm-hmm. or whatever. And this hatred is so bad that it's just bringing everything like all together, and people are getting hurt behind it. And democracy is take is still taking a back seat. Yeah, it's it, the thing that that Carol. When I look at all of this that that keeps happening, is that the division in our country just seems to be getting wider and wider and wider. What do you think? Uh, yeah, that disturbed me. And what really disturbs me, regardless of anybody's political views, there is a difference between your rights as a citizen, apart from your political. Um, the political um, house that you live in, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that as a private individual, you have the right to safety and security, and that's protected by both state and federal laws. Mm -hmm. So why is very little being addressed to the rights of her husband and her to have a safe home environment, Regardless of her political agenda or what she wants or what he wants, he's a private citizen. Mm -hmm. Like you and I, we should not be invaded because of our political views. And I wanted somebody to stand up and say that. Well, Uh, Governor uh, Youngkin came under criticism for his response Mm -hmm. to the attack (laughs) um, at a Republican rally, campaign rally for congressional candidate Yelsey Vega. Youngkin said, quote, they had a break in last night in their house and he was assaulted. There's no room for violence anywhere, but we're going to send her back to be with him in California. That's what we're going to do, Youngkin said, as the crowd laughed. But this is... Um, You know, um, when our leaders don't take this seriously, you know, what does that say to the rest of us, Carol? Exactly. And I've read Youngkin's statement, and I'm like, okay, man, take this out of the political arena. What what rights does a private citizen have in Mm -hmm. their own home, regardless of their political view? You, as governor, should be standing up for the rights of privacy, the rights of uh, people's homes, the rights of... For them to be safe in their own home. But he's not the only one. I mean, Ted Cruz, having jokes, they are cracking jokes. Jokes. They've got Halloween costumes with a person dressed up with a hammer. I That's mean, not funny. this is, it has gone. What happened to the days? You know, I hate to say, what happened to the, like the back of Reagan and even Bush or whatever? <laughs> we look, we <laughs> thought, <laughs> thought that that was bad. I'm like, whoa. It's <laughs> like Disneyland with them now. Yeah. You know, and so I'm saying is that, you know, when you can have, sit down and discuss your views and if you had differences, exactly. you, you advocated your differences for your differences or whatever. You advocate for what you believed in. Mm-hmm. And now it's just violence has gotten into the mix and it's like we're going to have a revolution you know all of this you know and then they sit there and talk about the hip hop people you know, sitting, you know sitting up here you know, mm-hmm. shooting each other doing this and the other and here we are doing it not we here they are doing it on a national political scale with so called intelligent people yeah Don what was your response I think the so called is it okay um. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the, for me, it's what happened to just being um, polite. Oh, that's mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. What just happened to being polite? Because mm-hmm. for the statement that he made and others made, mm-hmm. what if that had been your house and your spouse, and they had come in? Would you so say the empathy? Would is, you is say I'm gone. sorry, but send her home? Would you do that? In that, in the midst of that pain, you know, you're not feeling what's going on here at all mm-hmm. in my home that was invaded by somebody exactly. who broke in. I ain't opened the door and let him in. He broke, broke in. in. So which is a crime. That's a crime. So when when others are out here talking about crime as an issue, yes, it is is. on both sides. So you can't just say black crime is, you know, rising and rampant. 
It's crime from Period. others who have mm-hmm. views yes. that espouse violence. So are you guys worried about uh, Tuesday yeah. and going to the polls? Oh, yeah. Well, well I voted well, already. Well, let me just say this. People have been voting early in record numbers. It has far exceeded 2018 and 2020 already. So I don't know exactly what the turnout will be on Election Day. Because in the old days, <laughs> election Everybody day was the only wait. time you could yeah. vote. Yeah. Right. Now, right. you know, Virginia used to be the 49th state in the country with access to vote. Now we're the 11th with the easiest access to vote. And now we have same day register. You register to vote and you can vote on the same day from October 18th all the way. Even on election day, you can mm-hmm. do that. So now we have more ch- opportunities to vote. You know, we're 45 days ahead of time with early vote. So I'm not sure what impact on Election Day is going to have like in the, back in the day. Mm. I think mm-hmm. that if you look at the numbers in your early vote, mm-hmm. I know one day in Hampton we had 500 in one day. Mm. You know, so the if they wanted to make a difference, they would be at the early vote locations. So I, I do, I am very concerned about intimidation. I'm more concerned about inside the polls with the election officers because the radical right are putting their people in to challenge everything inside there. Mm-hmm. And this has happened in the last two elections. So we're talking about people who are watching the, the actual process. No, no. Oh, who, no. Are who, who are at, at, actually at, the electoral officers, uh, in, election officers inside the precinct. The ones who check okay. people in and right. give you your ballot. And in the last two elections, they have been just arguing arguments back and forth. Um, some of the Democratic um, um, election officers have quit because it's been so mm. bad. It's inside the mm. precincts that's a concern right now. And so not so much violence keeping people from going to the polls, no. but you're more concerned about what happens once you're in there and you're trying to actually vote. Well, it's not going to be actually, yeah, it's not so much the person voting. It's more so that the election officers on both sides, on what well, the Republican side, that has been actually disagreeing on some of the things that's happening on the inside. Because they mm-hmm. quote, if we have voter integrity fraud issues, which that's not an issue in Virginia. There's no integrity fraud. And, if it, if, and whatever issues it was is less than 1%. You know, mm-hmm. even that and then numbers and you'll see it'll be a report coming out soon and you'll be and everyone will be able to see what the real numbers, you know, are, mm-hmm. you know, this happened since 2008. So my point is the concern is inside. We are, that's why we're asking as many people, reasonable folks to sign up to become election officers inside the polls. It's not about whether you're Republican or Democrat. It's about protecting the vote. That's yeah. what it's all about. On both sides. Because, On both sides. Because ultimately, the outcome is going to affect both, both sides. sides. Exactly. Yeah. So, right. so it's, about, it's about democracy. We just want it to be fair. We want yeah. it to be fair. That's it. Well, you know, the last time that I went, and I always yeah. like going on election day. It's something about the crowds mm-hmm. and seeing people. Um, but the time before when I went, I got questioned, but I had documentation. I had a passport, my social security, number two bills, my lease, um, mm-hmm. my birth certificate. And when I got questioned, I said, here, look at her. Well, why are you getting so upset about this? And I said, I'm not upset. I'm just documenting so you can prove. And... It was a rude awakening as to what people face when they go. So when I tell my students, I said, take every possible form of documentation you can. And also, unfortunately, I give your name and tell them, contact the NACP, Mm -hmm. contact your Mm -hmm. representatives, Mm -hmm. contact whoever you need Mm -hmm. if you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go to the phones because people are calling him even before I gave out the number. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Those are the numbers to call to join our conversation. 757-440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Ken joins us from Norfolk. Hi, Ken. You're on the air. 
Hi, this is Ken. I, uh, hello, Gaylene. We used to work together back in the day in uh, in Hampton. But uh, listen to the comments today. It just it saddens me, and uh, sadly, it reinforces my beliefs all these years. Telling my kids as they were growing up, I was like, one day African Americans are going to get really PO'd because of the way they're treated, and they're going to revolt. And sadly, we will deserve it as a country the way they've been treated. And that happened a little bit with uh, when George Floyd was murdered. And but they didn't kill anybody. Right. And right. now you've got these uh, what I call angry white men. I kept telling a few years ago now angry white men are becoming the minority in their homes and power and careers and population. And they're going to get fed up. And some of these kooks are going to go crazy. And as Gayling was saying earlier, uh, they just needed permission. And Knucklehead got in the office and gave him permission. And just it saddens me. What saddens me even more, at least we know what we're dealing with with him. It's the folks that we expected to stand up like they did right after January 6th and decried it, the politicians. And then weeks, days, hours later, they said, eh, well, it's not that bad. And let's see what happens because they're just trying to save their own rears and their political careers. And it, it just saddens me as a country. Ken, and have you know, voted already? Or do you plan yes, to I vote? Have. You already, yes, have. You, you've mm-hmm. already See? voted. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, Thanks so much for the call. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to respond? I to t- Ken? Well, yeah, you know, ahead. I totally agree, Ken. I can't <laughs> remember you. I don't remember where, but I do remember who you are. I can see your face right now. But anyway, uh, I, he's, he's exactly right. But, you know, it's not so much of the African-Americans are revolting. We just got to continue on standing up. You know, and being out front and speaking up and, you know, and advocating, you know, we're not going to use violence. Don, when I keep hearing pundits say, well, the African-American community is not coming out or they're I mean, there's all this, you know, disinformation to try to discourage folks, too. Are we voting? Yes, we are voting. Okay, But that's another one of those things that they say that we're not coming out. Now, are we discouraged? Are we frustrated? Are we challenged by um, issues mm-hmm. that are impacting daily lives? The answer mm-hmm. is yes. But everybody in the country is. Not everybody. The people who are in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The people who are in the middle. In the middle and, and on the bottom. And on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're challenged of how we're going to continue to survive and pay for everything. Um, But the part of the conversation that I've been missing, and maybe it's just I'm not listening to the right station, you know, when they're talking about the economy, every seven to 10 years, the economy ebbs and flows. Mm-hmm. And always when it ebbs, people who have money, like the oil companies, who, as we now know, they have gotten billions of dollars richer. And this is not just for the oil. This is for their shares. Mm-hmm. That happens every time. But who's talking to them about, I I know Biden wants to have the conversation and he mentioned it, you can't be raising prices and profiting off of people's backs. Lower those prices because you have the means to do so. But you have the means to do so with food as well. So, you know, the wealthy just keep getting wealthy and we keep shouting economy, economy. But it's people who are taken advantage of because they have the ability to. Mm-hmm. And then when people say, when I'm saying people, when elected officials say they want to give tax breaks to the wealthy, but require them to do something if you're going to give them a break, which means don't raise the prices. Keep the prices at a certain level. Mm-hmm. But nobody asks you to do anything. But we're going to give you a tax break. You already don't pay taxes now. I'm on a rant. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Thank but she's for being she's, on that rant. And that's right. And I think the biggest thing to the whole thing is that with the administration, they're not talking about the good things that's happening. Yes. You know, with infrastructure, the jobs mm-hmm. number is going to come out tomorrow, and it's and it's supposed to be already predicted to be really good. And I mean, in history, in history, our jobs numbers has been the highest in history during this administration. But also the good things the infrastructure with jobs. We're not talking about the American Rescue Plan, the right. Inflation mm-hmm. Act. You know, even with the Affordable Care now, families now can get 
The family glitch is gone. Families now can get affordable care at low cost. I mean, affordable, low cost and good health care and get government subsidies when they couldn't get it before. Right. You know, this is under this started with the affordable care. I mean, with the um, uh, American American Rescue and and then an inflation act carried over to 2025. You know, so there's some really great things that's happening that people just don't see because they see prices in front of them. But, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees, but you got to talk about the long haul of what's happening. And then they're talking about the fact that a lot of people were given money in the American Rescue Plan. Oh, yeah. To survive. Yeah. Well, what you do with it? This Did you hold on to it or country? you give it away mm-hmm. or you spend it and you bought all these? I mean, you know, and I don't want to go there because I shouldn't because well, it's your money and it was given to you to survive during COVID. Mm-hmm. However, it was that administration the current administration that was able to get those things in place with limited support from others. So is, so is the problem that we don't know that the Democratic Party doesn't know how to um, sell itself? Messaging is a big issue. With it's Democrats, always been a period. big issue with yes. Democrats. My uh-huh. son mm-hmm. said, and I'm going to turn over to Carol because my mm-hmm. son called me up and he says, Mom, my friends and I decided that President Biden is getting a bad deal. He has everything that he said that he was going to do, he was going to do. The American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Act, student debt. He said he put a black woman on the Supreme Court. He hey. said he said everything. And he says, oh, he he, he got rid of the uh, the highest person in Al Qaeda. He killed mm-hmm. him, got him killed. I mean, he was like everything that he said he was going to do. He has done. I said, well, we have to call him the mailman. He said, why? I said, because he delivers. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, <laughs> Carol, yeah. you wanted to get in and the conversation. I see all of these things that we don't know and that are not given attention. So the media needs to step up their game too, because I look at the front page of the of the Washington Post and the New York Times, and I see, okay, this is what's happening, and it's the sad forecast. What about the great stuff like you're saying? Why not front page some of that? Why not have some more editorials exploring those things and explaining them to the public? Because the vast majority of us only see the negative. Well, and the vast, excuse me, I'm no, sorry. No, no, go I was ahead, just going to say ahead. the vast mm-hmm. majority aren't looking at the newspaper. Mm-mm. Okay, so They're what, online. what can you do? How do you get more people yeah. to be engaged with information where they get it from? factual information yeah and there's nothing that says it's fact or fiction and so when people no. like the one that went into pelosi's house you know he's getting negative he's getting information. information from from a from different so sources. many sources absolutely 757-440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 ruth joins us from norfolk hi ruth you're on the air hi i just wanted to comment on um, the talk about election people working the election. So mm-hmm. I had the same um, uh, a fear that other people that people would be coming in to disrupt. So I volunteered, and I'm actually an election poll worker in Norfolk this year for the first time. Yeah. Oh. And I I went to training, and I came out of that training so encouraged yeah. because everybody was so professional and serious. And this, the no nonsense, and I just felt so much better about voting in Norfolk and election integrity. And I'm really glad that um, that I decided to to go ahead and and become a poll worker. And and um, and I think everyone should if That's they right. can. Do Ruth, that. we appreciate that phone call because Thank we know you. that there's been a tough road to get people exactly. to actually and sign up. And we need up. people like Ruth. Mm-hmm. We do. We need more people like Ruth because they, and I'm glad to hear about it in Norfolk because I can tell you in other cities and it's not every precinct. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's every precinct, yeah. but it's predominantly the black precincts mm-hmm. and it's some in the rural areas as well, too. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you, you, you just have to watch it and make sure that we have good people in there that are positive and there to protect our democracy. And that's what it's all about. Uh, Four four zero two six six five or one eight hundred nine four zero two two four zero. Uh let's see if we can get one more call in. Danny joins us from Suffolk. Hi Danny, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? All right. Um basically I was just calling just to voice my concerns. One, um, 
I'm a past president of the NAA, NAACP in Northwest Florida. Mm-hmm. And I moved here to Virginia and trying to get involved with the NAACP here. But I've run into so many issues about people not calling me back and so forth and so on. Um, well, what's but, your question about, about voting or elections? My question is, how are they addressing the issues like we had in South, well, in Northwest Florida of individuals doing voter intimidation by carrying weapons outside the polling place and actually inside the polling place? Okay, Danny, thanks so much for the call. Actually, in Arizona, the uh, judge yesterday had to put in some pretty strict rules for um, because they were worried about people uh, patrolling the drop boxes where you could drop off your Mm -hmm. your, um, voting. But we do we have that issue here, Kayleen? I haven't really seen or heard of an issue of the being here. As I stated before, Election Day could be, I guess, like a symbol. It's more like a symbol now. You go vote on election day. We do, we have to be vigil. Um, the provisional ballots, I think, is what we need to watch the most right now. Uh, if they wanted to stop people, they're doing it different ways: phone calls, text messaging. The text messaging has gotten worse, mm-hmm. you know, with the hearing the fraud and stuff like that. But and I think that if you see any violence, I'm hoping we don't see any violence. But do know that it's being uh, it's being um, prepared in case something was in happening. Something right. happened. And Lock. in Virginia, you can't bring a gun. You can't. Right. In the polling. Right. You can't bring it in a polling place. place. Exactly. Within a certain, certain mm-hmm. amount of feet, you can't bring it. If you're just joining us, we're talking politics with the Another View Roundtable. Norfolk City Treasurer Don Hester, political science professor Carol Pretlow, and political activist and president of the Hampton NAACP, Gaylene Knoyton. 757-440-2665 or 1-800-940-2264. Four zero are the numbers to call to join our conversation. So, ladies, this week the Virginia NAACP filed a FOIA request demanding that the Virginia Attorney General Jason Mayorkas release public records of the newly formed Election Integrity Unit. Mayari says the unit will, quote, help restore confidence in our democratic process by working with law enforcement to ensure legality and purity in elections. Yet in an op-ed, Mayorkas also admitted no widespread voter fraud in Virginia or elsewhere in the country and asserted that the unit will work to protect voting rights and crack down on voter intimidation. Um, And then in addition to that, uh, he also, his office also said it would cost $20,000 to release the records, which the NAACP Virginia has paid. Um, So your thoughts about that. Why do we need an an election integrity unit if there are no issues with the integrity of the election, Dawn? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's There's sure nothing sweet. else to say. We don't. You know, um, in in normal process, if something is discovered um, during an event, not just elections, but what have you, it could be in the classroom, it could be educational, whatever, mm-hmm. then you would put a group in place to say, let's see what happens. Let's review this process, the steps, and what occurred. But you don't do it in front of when you don't have an issue. And so I think I'd like to see the contract because I want to know who's getting paid. Because if he's putting a unit in place, then that means somebody's getting paid. It's not a volunteer effort. I don't know. Which which would mean taxpayer dollars. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'm thankful that the NAACP paid it to get the information. But if, if, it's why would you put additional work on your staff when there's not an issue? There are more important things that they need yeah. to be dealing with. Kayleen, the $20,000, was that supposed to be a deterrent to keep from having to release the records? That seems awfully high. I mean, considering that in media, we deal with FOIA requests all the time. I've never heard anyone ask for twenty thousand dollars so records. let me just say this um our president robert barnett is the official spokesperson on this for legal purposes we do have general national general counsel we have the lawyers committee out of dc and we have another law firm so we have um strong support legal support so all i can say is this 
That's what he said. He charged, needed to charge for 500 hours. I think it took 500 hours to gather all this information. Don't understand why it's not as, as, at his fingertips, as President Barnett said in his press conference. I would tell everyone to go to the Virginia NAACP website to actually read the remarks from our president and see what this case is going on, what these FOIA is all about. But a lot of documents have been requested. And um, once, once it's been received, it will be reviewed. And and then, you know, everyone will, will know what the results are from this. But I just I will say this. Voter protection used to be, used to be only be at election time. Now it's year round. And so we have mm-hmm. to always stay on our P's and Q's and make sure that um, everything is fair and balanced. Mm. So why is it gone to year round? Is it because of of all the um, dissension? And so forth. Exactly. That- exactly. You got to keep people educated on what the, what their rights are in voting. You, the same day voting is new for us. Mm-hmm. Um, that what they and they know that you know as as Carol was talking about ID. You know what ID you need to bring. You got to educate people year round mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. And also, when I say voter protection, I must also talk about. Let's just talk about voter identity or issues just know the issues you know it used to be a time that politics had no permanent enemies or permanent friends right right mm-hmm. it's not like that anymore <laughs> <laughs> but you know Carol. Gaylene, i was thinking the same thing last night as i was reviewing some notes for my students and i said okay we're into this personality he is conservative he's liberal he's republican what about housing and unemployment and the issues themselves and specifics as to how you plan to address these. Because even in the classroom when we're talking, we have general information, but we need our elected leaders to come up with specifics. This is what's going to happen in the city of Norfolk or in this community, or uh, this is what's going to happen with your electric bill next month. Not these generalities, just the specifics, I think. The truth. Mm -hmm. The proof, yeah. (laughs) The truth. (laughs) Let's talk to Sandy in Chesapeake. Hi, Sandy. You're on the air. Um, Thank you so much for taking my call. I just want to say that I work uh, the polls, both both early voting and on Election Day. And a Mm -hmm. lot of how you're treated can be in the precinct in which you vote. I just got off duty and everybody was cordial, even the people passing out sample ballots for the other party, you know, were very Mm -hmm. nice to each other and very cordial. But sometimes on Election Day, I have voted precincts in which people can be very combative Mm -hmm. uh, when you're passing out sample ballots. But the other thing I wanted to say is um, just encourage everybody you know to vote. Mm -hmm. I think in off years, people just say, well, we just elected a Democratic president. We can sit back and relax. We don't have to do anything else. Well, You know, democracy is on the line, Mm -hmm. not just a woman's right to control her own reproductive health, not just uh, a woman's right to decide what the economic necessities for her family are, but democracy is on the line, and there are members of of a party who want to limit who can vote and whether or not their vote counts, and our black sisters saved our our acorns in 2020 <laughs> we, we need them to get out there now we need every vote because every vote really is going to count and i can tell you that if the other side loses i'm a democrat if the other side loses we'll hear it was it was stolen it was stolen it you know mm-hmm. and we're going to have a lot of close votes in this election mm-hmm. yeah. yes so, Thank you so much, Sandy. I appreciate the phone call. Um, So what do you all say to people that you probably still run into who say, I ain't voting. What's the point? You got to make it personal. Okay. You got to make it personal. You can't tell them that um, for the most part that, you know, you have to vote, you have to vote or whatever. When I talk to young black people, one thing I just tell them, your vote was sponsored by your ancestors. <laughs> That's one thing <laughs> exactly. I tell them. But, but you have to, this person, what's important to them? Jobs. Mm-hmm. They pay taxes. If you go to McDonald's, you pay taxes, right? So everything is controlled by whoever's in that seat. 
And so you have to find out what's important to them and ask what's important to them. And then you'll be able to turn it around and say why they need to vote or why mm-hmm. they should vote. And if they don't vote, this is what, what happened. What do you say, Don? It's the same thing. It's got to mm-hmm. be personal because mm-hmm. it's in the pocketbook. Mm-hmm. It's what am I able to um, take advantage of or what can I purchase? So just like, you know, when elders will say, some elders will say it's about the economy. I'm going, well, at least in this administration, Social Security mm-hmm. payments are going up for the first time in I don't know how many years. I mm-hmm. forgot the number. So that's somebody who is trying to look out for you and put rules and mm-hmm. policies in place mm-hmm. that will impact your pocketbook. Mm-hmm. We now have the ability to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies, mm-hmm. which have we it haven't had that Never before. Never had it before. Which means there's now going to be a cap on how much you spend for your medicine, but you still can get your medicine. Those rules were not in place before Mm-mm. 2020. Mm-mm. And so you have to think about those things. You might not be feeling it right now, but it's coming because it can't start till January 1. Mm-hmm. But, you know, mm-hmm. you have people in place now who are thinking about things that impact our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. And those are the people to me that we need to keep in office because other people are saying what they're going to do, but it doesn't have anything to do with my pocketbook or me being able to purchase my goods or my children being able to go to a school that is going to be um, sustaining for my children Mm -hmm. so that they can learn and be productive citizens. So there's so much. And a woman and a woman and a woman's body needs to be protected as well, too. You know, we got politics in the Supreme Court now. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, and we'll get to mm-hmm. another Supreme Court mm-hmm. thing in just a minute. But, Carol, what are the students saying? What are young people saying? Well, here? right now they're thinking about tuition relief and tuition assistance mm-hmm. and the fact that that's on hold. And I told him, I said, I think Biden did all he could. But guess what? The pocketbook is in Congress and you need to vote so that we can release this in, this money so that you can get some tuition relief mm-hmm. because a lot of my students are working two and three jobs and although we are saying well you have to come to class and you have to be on time the reality is when they're running from downtown Norfolk to Virginia Beach and back and forth they're not going to be on time and they can't afford those 200 300 textbooks and I don't like to be on them <laughs> rant but it's frustrating so i tell them get Mm -hmm. out vote we got to make change here we pay a lot of attention to the national um races but Mm -hmm. what's going on locally too if somebody's listening now and they're on the fence about whether or not they should go to the polls tell me something that's happening right here in hampton roads that they need to pay attention to so that they can vote and make a difference well Uh on most ballots in virginia you're voting for your congressperson Mm -hmm. at the federal Mm -hmm. level but you're also voting for your school board and your city council. Which is important. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, to me, I've always said the rubber hits the road right here at your local level. So you have to decide. you got to pick somebody to make decisions about your city and your city tax dollars that I collect that go <laughs> to the city councils and they mm-hmm. determine how to spend it. Mm-hmm. You have to make a decision about them. And the schools, you know, the recent information that most of us already knew our children lost a lot over the past couple of years but i will say you know for anybody who says to me that schools were closed too long or we did too much virtual i just want to say i'm glad that the children that are still here are here Mm -hmm. and we can help them catch up and move forward but if they had been in school we don't know what could have been the outcome of their health and their family's health so your local elections are are as important all of them are important. You can't miss a time to vote because the people that you pick gonna make decisions that impact your lives. And all you gotta do is pay attention and, to what they and do. And we advocated, we advocated to move ele- um, local elections to November because everyone need to understand all politics is local, but it's connected. Local, mm-hmm. state, federal. It's mm-hmm. all connected. And so everyone's been paying attention to everything on a federal level, but not paying attention to what's going on on a local level. Don't know who to vote for. They're running in there and asking everybody who I need to vote for. Now everyone will have to get educated on the local level as well. And and I will say this. It, it, it will stop this 
as you have voting as many times as possible a year. It shortens that period, so you have to keep running to the polls all the time, like mm-hmm. we did when we had a May election mm-hmm. and a November election. We'll get more people to come out to vote now because of local elections. It helps even off years. Yeah, all right, and yeah. I, I, go ahead. I, I was no, just going to say with the local elections, I'm glad people are asking who to vote for. Yeah, if you yeah. don't yeah. know, if you don't know who to mm-hmm. vote for, ask somebody that you trust mm-hmm. that you know their votes, mm-hmm. and then just. You know, take them at their word because you mm-hmm. trust them, you know them, and go vote for the person that they mm-hmm. that they recommended. Mm-hmm. The other part is that bothers me. also do me. some research on your own, mm-hmm. too. Well, you yeah, know. I always say that. But, you know, we're six, eight, day, five days out, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, well, that's true. Somebody that you trust, you know, your mm-hmm. mama, your auntie, your whatever. But then the other thing is, though, the local elections now have gotten partisan. Mm-hmm. Local elections were always nonpartisan. But now we know who's a Republican and a Democrat in most of the elections that are running. Mm-hmm. That's not the case because at your local level, you, you, I mean, at all levels, really. But at the local level, you're working for the citizens that live in your city. Well, and, and ultimately, isn't that what every politician is supposed to be doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. working for the citizens, citizens in that area. <laughs> no That's matter, exactly right. No, no matter, matter what. what right. No matter what. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, we got a Facebook messenger from Johnny who says, while he appreciates our panel guests, he would really like to have at least one African-American male perspective in the conversation. Johnny, call us if you are, in fact, African-American at 440-757-440-2665 or one 940 And I, I do want to say this, too, um, because I want our audience to know we tried our very best to get a conservative voice to join our panel and every single person that we reached out to said no well uh you know uh I can understand why, because, you know, if you come up against us, it's going to be a little challenging. <laughs> you know? It's going to be a little challenging. We have the facts. We, we, will, we you know, really have the facts. We will always be respectful to yep, anyone data. who has mm-hmm. a different opinion and voice That's because true. we do listen, because we do want to understand, because we don't want our politics to be as divisive as they are. Do you think that the majority of people are as divisive as what is portrayed in the media and so forth. I mean, I know, I know there's a faction of, of diehard, you know, um, folks who want to see things, this, this, this democracy destroyed. I mean, look at January 6th, you can sell, tell from that. But I mean, if we look across the country and look across, just look across Hampton Roads for that matter, are there really that many people that want to see things destroyed? Well, do you think, well, I think, you know, to your statement, the people on January 6th, they didn't think they were destroying. They thought they were saving. Yeah, they Good thought, and, that, and that's what they'll tell you. You know? They thought they was so doing they a, th- the, the, the 1776 Revolution. <laughs> 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 what, right. I mean, what have even said that? <laughs> right. So, you, you know, know, so that is so, their, their mindset. Mm-hmm. So half of us see it as destroying, half of us seeing, as half saving. of them seeing as saving. Where do we get to just... Let's live. <laughs> yeah. Let's live without the hate and the pain and the cuss words and all the negative stuff the that goes song. along yeah. with Why can't right? we live together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no clue because I'm thinking the same thing. Now, when I sit in my classroom, there are people who have different opinions. They, But we're sitting around, and actually my favorite class, we're sitting around a round table talking. Here is the area of concentration. Here are the pros. Here are the cons. How are we going to debate this? And we have people who are Republicans, who are Democrats, and some who are, I don't give a D. But <laughs> we talk about mm-hmm. it. How is it that we can get, and I call them young people, 18 to 20-something, to do this, and then those of us who are old should be the masters and the mistresses of this, but it's not happening. And the students even, we have invited people to class, and they said, look, could we get them to talk about the issues and not their political party? And when I write the emails and all to say, please come, but we don't want to hear you running for office. We want to hear what is your solution. Oh, I'll get back to you. And I don't hear anything. Well, I guess my, my point is if we don't talk to each other, how do how do we expect to come to a middle ground? 
Right. How does that happen if you're not willing right. to talk to each other? Well, that kind of goes back to um, Johnny, and, and I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure what point he was trying to make. Um, but he said he wanted an, at least one African American male perspective in the conversation. Well, and and that's been a part of um, the national conversation. You know that black males are voting for more Republicans, or they're staying at home. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true, but if you look at the data from B. The last two cycles, black men have not voted as much as, as much we as would voters. like yeah. for them to. And so what is causing that, mm-hmm. you know, so that they aren't, um, don't feel Definitely. like they're at the table or want to be at the table or they mad at the table. Mm-hmm. But their votes, their votes do, their voices matter. So if we're not listening, we got to get do a better job of listening. Okay, let's go to Mark in Northampton County. Hi, Mark. You're on the air. Oh, hi. Hi. I just wanted to point out, uh, if anybody uh, wanted to resolve any mysteries about voting in Virginia, the Virginia Department of uh, Elections website is actually quite good. And there were questions earlier I heard about uh, voter ID in Virginia. There's a list there that shows you everything that's mm-hmm. that works and, and what doesn't. Uh, so uh, okay. it's a really good resource if anybody wants to hit it. I really appreciate that call. Thanks. And Mark, I'm have you voted already? It. Yeah. Let me ask him. Oh, have, yeah. have you voted already? He said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? See? <laughs> I'm actually, glad he said that. Yeah, actually, I'm an officer of election, so I really need to vote early. <laughs> I, I, I do every, every time. Yeah. But thanks so much for the call, he, he's Mark. exactly we appreciate right. It. There's a citizen's portal, too. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone, whether you're registered or not, uh, well, if you're registered, everyone needs to check to make sure that their information in the system is correct. If you have registered to vote, you can go to the voter. You can go to the citizen portal. You can either register online, and or you can check to see where you know where where your um your, your application precinct. is. Mm-hmm. And also, 16 and 17 year olds can now be pre-registered. But if you're 17 year olds year, years old and be 18 by November the 8th, you'll be able to vote. You can you'll be able to vote, register, and vote. Matter of fact, if you're 17 and you're going to be 18 by November 8th and you ain't registered, <laughs> you can register <laughs> on and that vote day. by provisional ballot on the next <laughs> day. <laughs> or you can do an early vote but until Saturday. How, how do you think that will turn out in terms of people um, registering and voting actually on Election Day? I Are think, you looking forward to the, to I'm the numbers? Very looking, I'm looking forward to it because all those folks said, I wish I could vote. And cause, but I'm not registered. You can pull them by the ear and just take them and say, "Come on, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be calling. Every, I'm gonna be calling everybody I know that I know ain't registered. Saying, look, this is your ch- opportunity. This is your chance. Quit complaining." Mm-hmm. Okay, we only have a few minutes left. I want to run to one other topic. Mm-hmm. Supreme Court heard arguments this week on cases involving Harvard and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. At issue is whether or not race conscious admissions decisions to build diverse student bodies should be allowed. The court seems to be leaning towards ending affirmative uh, action. What do you think? Well, Dawn. it's just another in the line of taking and removing opportunities for people not just people of color because it's going to impact a whole lot of well not just black people it's Mm -hmm. going to impact a lot of people um and i'm just in my mind thinking so what else can a school use to make sure that they're that they are creating a diverse culture of students Mm -hmm. um if you're not going to use race use something else right but if you, if it's a part of your mission of your school, then you will come up with something else. But I think it's going to be gone away. Carol, but, I'm the kids. It country. frustrates me because okay, here's affirmative action, and they they argue like the people who get in under affirmative action aren't qualified and won't do well. It's not that these people aren't qualified and wouldn't get in. It's that, unfortunately, some schools are biased. I was an affirmative action candidate and still had to maintain the same grade point average, do the same stuff. And the students that I recommend to UVA and to other schools are qualified. They just not getting consideration. So I am real frustrated. Seems like every time we make 10 steps forward, we make 20 steps backwards, and this is 
Okay. A back. Gaylene, I have a specific question for you online before, and then you can go to the um, affirmative action. But uh, Jackie wrote us on Facebook Messenger. She says, quote, I've been trying to find a good online resource of local Hampton candidates, and I'm having uh, difficulty finding it. <laughs> Any recommendations for reliable sources? Since she was Hampton. she a Hampton candidates to vote for, or she just wants to know who yeah, they she are. Wanted, yeah, she wants to know who they are and and information about them. Okay, everything is on Hampton.gov. Okay, you can go to Hampton.gov and you'll see the background of all the candidates that are there, um, and um, and we and we can and and we got fairly good um, incumbents that are running, um, that have a record, and look at who has a record, you know, and see what they're doing okay. uh, on that one. And if you're a Hampton, you can join the Hampton. Um, Hampton in the ACP too, but anyway. <laughs> but let me just let me just say this. Okay. There is a movement that um, to replace the word equity and diversity with opportunity. Oh, opportunity, like opportunity is a big word. Mm -hmm. Opportunity. They said you can't have either without opportunity. That's exactly right. But guess what? Opportunity does not demand equity and diversity. Equity and diversity demand opportunity. Therefore, those words have always that. have to be out front. Now, let mm -hmm. me say this. A lot of your PWI schools, they have... Predominantly white institutions. Yeah, predominantly white institutions, right. Mm -hmm. They have programs for families that make $60,000 and under where they go free. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see... You know, who applies for those and how would since if the affirmative action was to go away, how would that work out, you know, for that, you know, with, and that piece of yeah. it, too? You know, so but I just want to the important thing that I want to say is that you can't put opportunity ahead of equity and diversity because opportunity is for it's going to be it's a big thing. It's a big okay. umbrella. Right. Whereas equity and diversity is targeted. And I like to know the rules. What are yeah. the rules? Yeah. And I, and I, and it's different, I would assume, for um, publicly owned colleges and universities and private. versus yeah. private, mm -hmm. privately owned. Okay, we have two minutes left. Last thing to convince somebody to vote, Dawn. <clears throat> um, my life depends on it. So I would ask you to vote to make sure that we all have a good life. Okay. Gaylene? Don't complain. Vote. Your voice is your vote. And if you know anyone that is not registered to vote, please take them to the polls. They can early vote until Saturday. They can register and vote by provisional ballot, and they can even vote on election day. So please, your voice, your vote is your voice. Okay. Carol, last word. Well, this is your history. This is the trajectory. Don't get off the train now. It's too, we've gone too far. And if you know your history, then this is motivation enough for you to take the next step. And have each of you voted already? Yes. Yes, you I have. have. You have. I haven't. I go on election, election day, day and, and stand I'm, in line. I'm actually going on election <laughs> day, too. too. And, 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 rem and remember, your ancestors sponsored it, your vote. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what your I'm saying. Your vote was sponsored by uh, your ancestors. So y'all might as well just roll right on into the polls. So <laughs> there really, really, really is no excuse, no excuse. for not voting. And right. especially no. in Virginia, for the first mm -hmm. time, folks, mm -hmm. please remember you can register and vote on the same day, That's on right. election mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies, as always, mm -hmm. because you guys are just incredible. And as we all know from firsthand experience, elections have consequences. <laughs> it's your right and your duty to participate in our democracy. And in Virginia, you have absolutely no excuse for not voting. You can register and vote on Election Day. If there is someone you know who is on the fence about voting, do me a favor. Please share this show with them. Go to our website, anotherviewradio.org, and download the podcast. And don't forget to sign up for our eView newsletter. It's a once-a-week reminder of upcoming shows. Next week on Another View, analysis of the election results with political analyst Dr. Eric Laville. Our theme music is an original composition created especially for Another View by Jay Sennett. Lisa Godley is our show producer. Jordan Christie is our audio engineer. And Danielle Saunders answered our phones. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. No excuses. Go vote. And let's get together again next Thursday at noon for Another View.
Support comes from Hampton Roads Community Foundation, partnering with donors from all walks of life to improve southeastern Virginia through grants, scholarships, and leadership initiatives. Learn more at hamptonroadscf.org.